that song, there's a home. When we talk about our Father's home, we see Jesus saying he's building his church. So there's the church of Christ, there's the home of the Father, and then we see the Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So your body, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The church is the church of Jesus Christ. And the home of the Father is the nations. Why did you, as you gave your life to Christ, you became the temple of the Holy Spirit? Each one. But then you get a title called Living Stone. You can write that down. I know you are writing down this stuff. Hey, Thank you. Is three. Yes, to write down, please. Thank you. So we have the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the church of Jesus Christ. We have the home of the Father. As the temple of the Holy Spirit, you have a title that is also called Living Stones. We see that in the book, in the first letter of from Peter to the church. That you are a living stone. Now what do you do with the stone? You just let it lay there? No. Living stones being built in into a spiritual house. Living stones built in for the church of Christ. But then Jesus Christ building his church will bring the church to the Father. And the church of Christ from all the nations will become the home of God. Hello. Hello. The church of Christ will become the home of God. What are you called with Jesus Christ? Co-workers. So living stones, yes, you need to surrender and give yourself to be built in, into the church. But then also with Jesus Christ, you must build his church. Amen. Temple of the Holy Spirit. But as living stones, be part of the church of Christ. And as co-workers, built with Jesus Christ, His church, so that His church can become our Father's home, His eternal home. Genesis 1, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, very excited, saying, let us make man. Let us make man. What they have around them is just excellence. They're excited about what they have, but they say, we want more. And with excitement, they decided, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we will make a man. That will look in our image, our likeness. Hello? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all three, very excited about your destiny, about your life. Are you with me? What are you going through? At the end of the day, my brother, my sister, you need to hear God's excitement about your future. You need to know that your Father, God, is excited about your future. Amen. Amen. But may God help you to understand interaction, how the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit want to have interaction with you. We are talking from the book of 1 Corinthians, first letter to the Corinthians from, from Paul with a lot of day words for the past three weeks, and we're ending off today with day words from 1 Corinthians 13, 14, 15, 16. Now we've seen in chapter 12, the word says there's a lot of different spiritual gifts, but there's only one spirit. There's a lot of different ministries, there's only one God. That's in the beginning of chapter 12. There's a lot of workings. There's a lot of things happening. But there's only one Lord. One Spirit. One God. One Lord. And in the body of Christ, my brother and my sister, there will be different dimensions. This guy, he will have this business and the millions will just flow. This other man, he has a total different calling. And you cannot compare the one to the other one. Different gifts, 
God is using this man in this way. He's not using you in that way. Acknowledge that, honor that, be excited about it, about God's unique plan for each one. Why? Because you honor the one that decided that we will have different gifts. We will have different facets of ministry. Hello? There will be different type of workings from him, dealings from him in and through our lives. You with me? So the chapter 12 is talking about how must you distinguish the body of Christ and not stand in superiority or inferiority and comparison in a way that's not accurate. And then chapter 13, God saying, the heart of everything is love, is his character. When in chapter 14, he basically comes and starts to speak about what type of order must be there when you come together so that there's not chaos. He starts off with pursue love. You can write there, that's verse 1, right in your Bible there, pursue God. God is love. Amen. Pursue his character. Pursue who he is. That's in essence everything. So when you're going to grow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, God's going to use you intensely. And then when there will be sensitivity in the Spirit, the essence of everything is make sure you run for who he is. Love. Pursue love. Amen. And desire spiritual gifts. Not desire spiritual gifts as you desire to go to America. The context of this desire has to do with that you push in for it. That you will push in for it. Spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speak edification and exhortation and comfort to men. I want to challenge you to, to trust God to grow in the gifts, in the prophetic in the speaking in tongues, in the singing in tongues. Next week, we're going to pray for you. I say, in principle, this week, make sure that your heart is settled with people, that you understand how to pursue love for all men and women, but also for yourself. That there's not standing in a self-condemnation or standing in a place where you don't know how to love yourself with the love God has given you. It's very important that you come into that place to know that how to love yourself with the love that God has given you. And only from that place, the gifts through your life, the ministry through your life can make sense. And only then God is pleased with what you do. And that his blessing is truly on it. So even next week, bring some friends. We're going to, there will be prophetic ministry. For edification, exhortation, and comfort. Amen. Let it be so. The second part of the verses is verse 14 and 15. Let's start with 13. Therefore let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. My understanding is unfruitful unfruitful. No baboon can pray in tongues because he has not a spirit. But the voice of your spirit is to be able to pray in tongues. You have the nine gifts. You've studied that. There's the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of the nine gifts is speaking in tongues. And the other one, interpreting of tongues. And that the Holy Spirit gives to who he wants to, whenever he wants to. But there's the other speaking in tongues. And that is to build your spirit where it is your Spirit's voice, where God wants everyone to be able to express from their spirit what is in there. Because your spirit is perfect, reborn, perfect, and the utterance from your spirit through tongues is perfect. It's perfect prayer. Hello? Perfect prayer. Now he says, when you pray in tongues, know that it is your spirit. Let's pray. And your mind is unfruitful. Because in your mind there can be a lot of voices. But part of be still and know that I am God. Part of that is so that you can from your spirit speak 
and the voice from your spirit is louder than the voices in your soul. Voices of anxiety, of stress, of negativity, or judgment, or religion, or whatever. All those voices. If you start to silence in you, when you choose to ignore that voice and say, let the voice in my spirit speak. That's praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. With all the discussion in the previous 13 verses, what is the conclusion then? Verse 15. I will pray with the Spirit, small letter, that's my Spirit, and I will pray also with the understanding. So that's the two facets. I pray with my Spirit, that's praying in tongues. I pray with my understanding, that's Afrikaans, English, so Swahili, Sutu, Zulu. I pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit. I will sing in tongues. I will also sing with my understanding. Afrikaans, English, Swahili, Sutu, Zulu. Are you with me? After the whole discussion, this is what Paul is saying to them. You need to do this. You need to focus into this place. Many times when you would pray in tongues, especially when you don't know what decision to make, especially if there's confusion, God will bring that peace beyond all understanding. Hello? So that you can do exactly as he says. Because in your spirit, praying in tongues, you're perf praying in his perfect will. Your soul says this. Your emotion says there. Your reasoning says there. But you are pushing in the spirit. You're praying in tongues. And these three must align itself with the prayer from your spirit. Are you with me? Are you with me? So praying in tongues, yes. But trust God to pray until you find a release. I'm so excited for the fact that in the season we are doing the spirit dynamics, a lot of ministry about the gifts. We have these day words written in December. And that I just felt this is for this season for the church. And then yesterday we received a prophetic word from Dr. Jonathan David. And uh, yeah, that he sent out to the nations. And I was just so excited. That there's such a challenge in that, that he believed God is giving the church in the nations now about the gifts, especially tongues. So if uh, somebody, I see there's somebody sitting there, um, can give us that uh, prophetic word from him, I will send it to you, most probably this afternoon or tonight also. And uh, I believe God is challenging you guys, and that Challenging me that we will push in the spirit. Push in the spirit. When it happened that I would not know what to do. And when I start to pray in tongues. Then suddenly at one stage I just know exactly. Just know exactly. Once I prayed for a Satanist priest. Didn't know he was one. Otherwise most probably I followed my own strategy. And when I wanted to pray for him. It was just my head was gone. But there was nothing. I couldn't think anything to pray. And then just started to pray in tongues and suddenly phew, it just came through and the guy big manifestation set free from the devil, devils and yeah, and God did a major thing. Once also I prayed, oh that's not a good idea, I will if you just can have it off first. Thank you. Um, so it happened once in, even then in the army praying for a lot of guys People call it like a revival, and a lot of guys were just falling in the spirit. Just, just, and so there's just these people that needed prayer and come there and a little bit feel of like the man of power for the hour. You with me? The hands and boom, 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 boom. And as I prayed for this one guy, he fell and he sat up straight. He looked at me, he laughed, and he walked out. And from that moment, I couldn't breathe. When you start, <sighs> like this, and I realized something happened here. I phoned the church in Helbron Church in Lufontein, Agape, where I was, and I said, something happened here. And I was reminded about the scripture, don't lay hands on hastily. And uh, so through the day, I, it was like, I felt I'm going to die now. I mean, it's okay for five minutes do that for five minutes but start to do that for an hour 
because the doctor do that for an hour or two hours, then you feel like you're going to die. And I just felt I was maybe just praying tongues. And I was shocked because as I was like, like this, I started to pray in tongues. And everything settled normal. And I stopped praying in tongues. It starts again. I couldn't believe I was shocked with the impact and the power of praying in tongues. Now, that evening, I felt, okay, I'm either going to go to heaven or I don't know what's going to happen tonight, that I'm tired. And I was just praying in tongues, and I fell asleep while praying in tongues so that I could, could breathe. And the next morning, it was gone. I was just, it was just good. But the revelation about the power of praying in tongues. Later, from my other Satanists, that I asked him, you sent someone in to me, and he laughed and said, yes. And whatever the enemy wants, even I was in the wrong. Even when I just started to pray in tongues, my body could breathe. When from my spirit, I could pray. I was so amazed about that. Okay, so the year, not the year, but the word from him yesterday. Pray in tongues. How do you like that? The main theme for today's teaching. Pray in tongues until the Holy Spirit gives you an utterance which becomes the key of entrance into the spiritual realm. April to September this year is the time for all conflicts, contentions to come to an end within our spirit. Con Conflicts, contentions. My brother, my sister, the only reason why you have a conflict with somebody or a contention with somebody is because it's in your spirit, in your, in your, in your life. If there's no contentions, no things here, but God's peace and love is just ruling and reigning, you will not have it. Now that is in a perfect world, hey. But that's what God says, it must stop. God says, this is a season. This is a season. With this stuff in your heart, it needs to stop. Petty issues, petty things. For all conflicts, contentions to come to an end. But how key, pray in tongues until the Holy Spirit will give you utterance. What does that mean? You have utterance when you pray in tongues but a specific utterance that will be a specific prayer. You don't know what you're praying, but there will be a specific utterance and you would feel there's a certain release and you have peace and then you stop. But still I say, get a lifestyle of praying in tongues. When you drive here, maybe not five minutes anymore to church, maybe now 15 or 10. That extra five or extra 10, maybe it's so that you have a powerful time in, in prayer from your spirit. Hello? And even going back so that your heart is open for the word, but afterwards so that the word is so imprinted that it will have a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest, even for the parts that you didn't catch or didn't see at that moment. That your spirit received it and that from your spirit there will be a harvest. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. There we go. The Holy Spirit must be given the full reign to subdue all negative reactions. Amen? So that Christ can dwell richly in our hearts. Let's make place for that. God will bring those who have been tuned to the same frequency to come together as one. We will know divine release from the limitations of the natural and be launched into the liberty and freedom that is in Christ. There is a miracle in your obedience. Thank you. That's the whole prophetic word for now. Came through yesterday. And say, so there's a miracle in my obedience. Joshua? Okay, every day, once. Ah, numbers, uh, day number six, day number five, nothing happened. 
Joshua, are you sure must we must do this still? Walk around. There's not even a crack in a wall, man. It didn't even start to crack. Nothing started to shake even. There's absolutely nothing happening. We are six days. There's in any case only one day left. And now for the seventh day, is it because nothing worked? Now you're just going to let us walk around the whole day seven times. Hello? But in the obedience, they saw the miracle. Even with the obedience, it was like ridiculous. In the obedience, throw down the staff, the rod, the rod of Moses. Throw it down. Came a snake. What is God saying to him? Your nature, because with the staff, it was something about the person and his, the testimonies of who he is. But with the staff, this is your nature, snake. Take it up. But in me, it became the rod of God. It was the rod of Moses. And from there, the Bible talks about the rod of God. Now, my brother, my sister, you can have the rod of God in your, in your life. You could have laid down your old life. The snake is out. The snake is gone. You have the rod of God. You have authority. You have authority. But still you can choose not to walk in obedience. And you will be there. And you will be there. And nothing will happen because you don't use it. Not as a, do have a stuff here in English, is it? Yeah. Maybe that word came from there. But if you never use it, when God says, do it, put it out there, put it in there, then you will go through and you will have a battle with Egypt till you die. Now what about using the authority that God has given you? Using the authority God has given you. There's a miracle in your obedience. Even though it was locked up in the rod of God, if I can say like that. It didn't come from there. It came from an obedience of God and man. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help you with that, please, man. See, God is waiting for you. He believes in you. But he knows there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot that's going to happen. If you surrender yourself to obedience, he will surprise you. Hallelujah. That's chapter 14. At the end of chapter 14, verse 38, 39, 40, 38. But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly, intensely, with effort to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. We need to push one another, challenge one another that we will do it. Let not our laziness or con that we are convenient, it's convenient, it's Moses gemakkelijk met dit. Wat betekent dit? We are, you know, in my comfort. It's taking me out of my comfort now to put effort into praying tongues. It's saying to your flesh, do not forbid to speak in tongues. Don't let that hoha voices in you forbid the speaking in tongues because your soul does not feel like doing it. So your soul and your emotions actually forbid, forbid your spirit to pray in tongues. Because you allow your soul to be the boss. You allow your soul to be the boss. No. There cannot be something like that. Are you with me? Push yourself. But let verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Other translations are talking also that what is profitable, that what is for everybody's benefit. The same as a few chapters earlier. Everything is permissible, everything you're allowed to do, according to the word, but not everything is of value, is beneficial for the body of Christ at that moment. You can know a lot of things, and you can do a lot of things, but it's 
It's of no profit if you just do it because you can. No. Do it because God said you must do it. And he knows that you can do it through his grace. But allow him to do it through you. You with me? Hello. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. Talking about the resurrection, but at the end of the day, verse 10, that by the grace of God, I am who I, what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. By the grace of God, I am what I am. What is it saying to these guys that were so successful, even in the spirit, even in, 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 in the gifts, flowing in the gifts, to successful people? Remember, remember who you are is just because of God's grace. And grace is not just unmerited favor with, I missed hell, I'm going to heaven. It's not just, I'm forgiven by God's grace. It's also God's, as you know that, or you write it down, God's enablement. Bibles next time. Eh? Hmm. God's enablement, that he enables you. So what is Paul saying? By the grace of God, I am what I am. By his own enablement. He enabled me to become a child of God. He enabled me to be successful. He enabled me to walk in the Spirit, to have the, these gifts, to, to see the power of God manifest. He enabled me. And that enablement is basically called grace. No reward for anything in my life. It's just he who gave me that grace because he wanted to in his love. Amen? So that his grace towards me was not in vain. Not that you will go and burn in hell. No. You will go to heaven but be saved as through fire. His grace in vain. His enablement he gives you here on earth to live for him. To learn how to worship him in spite of your circumstance. For a major lot of things that he wants to do with you here on earth. That he is excited about. You must it all. And that grace, that enablement that he is giving you. For excellence in your future. Excellence in next year. Will you be doing it? It's not just about your salary. In the sense of you have a certain work with a certain job description. Remember what we said. Stephen, Philip, all those deacons, you find deacons and demons, but all those deacons, they were spiritual. And their job description was not the limit, but the fact that they were spiritual and full of the word and miracles manifested. With Stephen, with Philip, with all these deacons. The grace was not in vain. Are you with me? May God help you to see that. And that you will not just do because somebody gave you that position. Because they expect that of you. No, that you do because you see it as an awesome honor to do it for Christ. Amen? And you will see multiplication in your life. Hallelujah. Let it be so. Chapter 15. Still. Verse 56, 55, and 56, 57. There we go. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? Where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. When you're under the curse of the law, not in the heart of what was God's heart with the law. But if you are just in performance, I'm in trouble, I'm out of trouble. I'm in trouble, no, I mustn't be in trouble. That's under the curse of the law in that place. Reasoning in your mind, even when you hear the word, it's reasoning about this, reasoning about that the whole time. What about allowing the Holy Spirit just to bring an openness in you and you can see maybe a major lot of changes that God will do. It's not about, first of all, if the person speaking to you is perfect. You will not find that person. No. 
But what is the one that's perfect living in you? What is he saying to you through it? Are you with me? Sting of death is sin. It's like you having the scorpion. You embrace the sin. It will embrace you. You embrace bitterness. It will embrace you. You embrace, yeah, judgment. Whatever. He's wrong. I'm right. Whatever. Embrace it. But the sting will come. And destruction will be there. Death, where is your sting? There's a death that is for your benefit. A death that works for you. And that is Paul saying, life is Christ and death is gain. And that is not just when I die and go to heaven and see him face to face. That is today when I surrender this part of my life, this area also to Christ. And the death of that flesh is for my gain. The death of my flesh, the death of my carnal rubbish is to my gain. Because it will be more of Christ more of his character, more of his principles, more of his wisdom, when there's the death of my fleshly ideas. Are you with me? Like I spoke here also about, like when I had, God said, no, not medical studies, you will not be a missionary doctor, others will go, others will leave, have the impact. And the second time, my, I mean, I'm reasoning with God about this. I say, God, but there's such a lot of open doors as a doctor, and this, 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 this. And it's true, but not for me. And the scripture I got in my spirit, the verse, the natural man does not receive the things of God. Remember we talked about that? And how I had to make the decision that I must put to death my, my way of thinking. And we are still doing it day by day. Are you with me? God is going to help us. But it says, in the midst of all this stuff, but thanks be to God, everybody, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory lives in you, according to Scripture. And you find that, like we said the first service, 1 John 4.4. 4. You have overcome. Already. For what's going to happen tomorrow, you have overcome already. Why? For greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. 1 John 4.4. 4. Remember that. Victory is alive in you. In your spirit, that's perfect. But it's all going to be if you allow yourself to live from your spirit. Live as a worshiper in spirit and truth. Spirit like your spirit, in spirit and in truth. Your spirit connected with his spirit. Truth, God's word and your word, the same. That's it. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me. We can do this. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, Abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, but that you will have 36 years and fourth harvest, or your children, or their children. If you don't see that harvest, it's incorruptible seed. If Christ is in what you've done, it's incorruptible. It will bring forth a harvest. With what, if what you've done is according to the word, what God has given you, that word will not return void to God, but it will be fulfilled in your children and in their children. And f as a fulfilled promise, fulfilled word, it will go back to the Father through your grandchild or through your child. But it will be fulfilled according to the word. So take courage. And if you don't see tomorrow, don't, don't get discouraged and, and steal that legacy, that blessing, the hand of God on your grandchild because you don't see it for your life. But you didn't, God didn't tell you, my son is not going to manifest in your generation. It's only going to manifest in your grandchild. God will not necessarily tell you that because he's pleased with faith. When you walk by faith, you must believe that he is and the rewarder of those of of him. A rewarder of you who 
follow him and believe in him? Do you believe that he will reward you? I don't see it. If you go to the grave with that faith, still that promise is there for your child and your grandchild. That how you believed in God, how you stood in faith with him, your child or your grandchild somewhere will have the 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. Because God is faithful. God is not a man that he should lie. So you stand by faith. Not just for yourself, but for so many others. And especially also for your children and for your grandchildren. Amen? May God help you with that. man. Chapter 16, verse 13. Watch. Stand fast. Fast like firm. In the faith, be brave, be strong. Be brave, be strong. And he can expect that of you. He can command you to, to do that. Not watch because there's trouble. But it's an alertness. Alertness. Watch it has to do with you are alert. You are sensitive in the spirit. You can see when things happen. You can feel, you can sense when God wants to do certain things. That is the context of that watch. Not just watch, here comes trouble. No. Be awake from your spirit. Tell your neighbor, be awake. Okay. Stand firm. Stand fast. Stand firm in the faith. Be brave and be strong. You can write the Ephesians 6 also in your Bible. Guys, you need to have your Bible here. We said that 25,312 times. You need to have your Bible here. But write it in a book, it's okay. But write some stuff in a Bible. I said that's part of legacy that you can give your child and your grandchild. You know why? Many of the people of old, they didn't write in the Bible because they felt it's disrespectful. They were genuine, but it's not, it's not necessarily that way. But with the things that God is showing you, like today, you write a date and you write one sentence at that scripture. And in each chapter, you just wrote one sentence somewhere or three words at a specific scripture. The day you die, and for your child and maybe even for your grandchild, I have grandpa's Bible. No, I'm your grandchild. You know? And God said this stuff to him in September, the year 2021. He's now in 2015. Are you with me? And it's so precious to him. And you know what you created? So much more legacy. What you've given him. But it's not necessarily that he will go and get another book out of the book rack to see what, what his granddad Grandmom felt. That's some way, some promises God has given you. Even sometimes, pray certain things for your kids. Maybe for grandkids. Okay, if we're going to heaven before the time, okay, no problem. But if not, if not, in your grandchild, there's a Bible with such a lot of gold of how the Holy Spirit opened up for you such a lot of stuff. And that open revelations that God gave you, that you received, all with that word that your child received. Oh, come on, man. Don't just think about yourself or about you're hungry or they expect me to have a Bible, so I, maybe I will bring it. Don't waste your life. God doesn't want to waste time with you. Don't you go and throw the time away that God is giving you, man. Amen? That's part of legacy. Now, the last one. Um, what shall I say? Verse 16. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 16. We did 1 Corinthians 15, 15. Can we read it? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 16. That you also submit to such, those who work together in ministry. And to everyone who works and labors with us. That talks about the submission to one another. 
And in that submission, the essence is be teachable. Even though you have the success, you have this anointing, you see the gifts flowing through you, a lot of stuff, you have a lot of answers, and your answers are actually from God. At the end of the day, remember, it's only because of the grace of God. And remember, submit to one another. Why? You can always learn from one another. And you always need one another. Arrogance, you don't need the one around you. You need your spiritual family. You need brothers and sisters with you. And in that context, when we pray with one another, let's trust the Holy Spirit and have the faith that Holy Spirit's going to work. Holy Spirit's going to work. Are you with me? Can we have it like that? Thank you, Father, that you just come and that you come and do amazing work in our lives, Lord. God, I pray for the release, a release of your gifts, Holy Spirit, into these people. You command us to, to run into with, with the gifts, to pursue it with love. God, that means you want to enable us. Thank you for your grace on our lives that we can walk from glory to glory, from strength to strength, into success, success according to your definition of success. But I pray that each one, that there will be a release from their spirit, that they will push to pray in tongues as a key in this season. I pray, Lord, that that all the other voices will be arrested, even the voice of depression, negativity, stress, anxiety, all those deception in religion, wrong evaluation of one another, that we will not be deceived by all these other voices. God, but help us so that our spirit will be strengthened as we choose even to respond to the word that came out yesterday, Lord, for your body, for the church, Lord. Here we are. Let it be done to us according to your word. We surrender. We give ourselves. Holy Spirit, show each one of us your strategy for us to, to bring praying in tongues back as a lifestyle in our lives. We trust you for that, Father. We trust you for that. And I pray for healing in the soul healing of emotions, disappointments, all those stuff, not from you, but that our soul will fall in line, that we will renew our mind with the mind of Christ that's in our spirit, your word, Lord, that our emotions will be healed and that our will will be submitted to your will as we come to the place of understanding your good, perfect and pleasing will. Thank you that you come and do that for every man, every woman here. Every man and every woman here, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for each one sitting here, there's specific guys here that you know that you need to get a breakthrough with a praying in tongues, a breakthrough to understand the voice from your spirit. I just want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you there where you sit. God, I pray for every man, every woman. God, that's reaching out to you, and I pray that you will just really come and do a, a work for them, a special work for the guys now reaching out to you, Lord, and that you will give them a breakthrough. I honor you for that, that you will meet them in a very special way, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, so we pray, and we'll say, amen, amen, let it be so.